hello friends so today we'll first take a case scenario then we'll go for the anatomy of the concerned region so here you can notice a 35 year old male felt a sharp pain in the left groin while lifting a heavy object so this is the uh, object what you can see here later he noticed that swelling disappeared when he lay on his back and he ignored the condition but after some times the condition recurred with more size and more pain and he went to the physician or doctor he observed a swelling there in the midway between the anterocephalic spine and the pubic symphysis so what is your diagnosis based on the history and physical findings it is a sure short case of inguinal hernia among all abdominal hernias inguinal hernias are very common they may be irreducible irre irreducible strangulated incarcerated and sometimes congenital also so anatomy of the inguinal canal is very very important and we will study under the following headings so ashley cooper said hernia requires more accurate anatomical knowledge first we will see the definition location extent size direction and all the other objectives we try to cover in this session so inguinal canal is a oblique musculo aponeurotic tunnel located in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall above and parallel to medial half of the inguinal ligament it extends from deep inguinal ring to superficial inguinal ring here you can see that on the left side you can see the normal inguinal canal and it is size is about 3.8 to 4 cm in length directed downwards forwards and medially you can see that and as you already know there are eight layers in the anterior abdominal wall first is skin then you will see the superficial fascia you can notice there skin superficial fascia then you have external oblique aponeurosis internal oblique aponeurosis transversus abdominis fascia transversalis extra peritoneal tissue and parietal peritoneum as you can see here we are trying to take layer by layer here so how is the skin here skin is thin sensitive than the posterior abdominal wall and it presents a linea alba in the midline and linea seminalis on the sides and it presents a umbilicus that is a scar tissue at the level of t10 then you can see after removing superficial fascia here you are having deep membranous layer then this is the external oblique muscle that you can see there so external oblique muscle will fold upon itself to form inguinal ligament here you can notice the lower part that is inguinal ligament is there so inguinal canal lies above and parallel to the medial half of this ligament and you can also notice there a spermatic cord coming out from the inguinal canal so inguinal canal will be here above and parallel to the medial half of inguinal ligament roughly 3.8 to 4 cm in length that is superficial inguinal ring opening in the external oblique aponeurosis above and lateral to pubic crest so it is a oblique triangular gap you can see there if you isolate this one you can see like this it's a oblique triangular opening there above and lateral to pubic crest or you can say above and medial to pubic tubercle that is a pubic tubercle so it has a lateral crest and medial crest lateral crest is attached to pubic tubercle and you can see spermatic cord comes like that you can notice that is superficial inguinal ring so superficial inguinal ring is a oblique triangle opening in the third layer of the anterior abdominal wall so when you open that you are seeing now internal oblique muscle you can see internal oblique muscle is continuing here as the cremastric uh, fascia 
you can see that that is the internal spermatic fascia formed by the fascia transversalis just below transverse abdominis muscle and you can notice there you can notice here you are noticing the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring is the defect it's a oval defect in the fascia transversalis that is the sixth layer of anterior abdominal wall so you can see there that is the inguinal ligament and uh, this is the distance between the anterior spine and uh, pubic symphysis that is mid inguinal point and uh, this deep inguinal ring present around half inch above the mid inguinal point you can see here that is the defect in the fascia transversalis so this entire thing is inguinal canal between the deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring that is superficial inguinal ring and if you take it out here you are seeing one more layer that is the external spermatic fascia derived from the external oblique muscle then cremastic fascia derived from the internal oblique then you have the innermost layer that is the internal spermatic fascia derived from fascia transversalis so these three layers cover the these are three coverings of the spermatic cord from inside to outside first it will receive internal spermatic fascia then cremastic fascia then add the superficial inguinal ring external spermatic fascia so if you take out here here you can see the floor the floor is uh, that is formed by this uh, inguinal ligament and that is lacunar ligament expansion of inguinal ligament and as you go behind and uh, above you will see one more expansion there this is the inguinal ligament attached between the anterospinal spine and pubic tubercle and here you can notice that is the pectineal ligament continuation of lacunar ligament it is atta attached all along the pectineal line of the pubis you can see that in the superior ramus of the pubis there is a pectineal line it is called as pectineal ligament of cooper that is conjoint tendon formed by the tendons of uh, interoblique and uh, transverse abdominis you can notice so lacunar ligament and uh, your inguinal ligament they are there inguinal ligament is the modification of the external oblique aponeuroses and gives three expansions lacunar pectineal ligament and your reflected part and here you can notice the locations of deep and superficial inguinal ring and extent of inguinal canal above the inguinal ligament that you can notice so anterior wall is formed by the external oblique lateral one third by the internal oblique then you can see the roof is formed by arched fibers of uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominis posteriorly you can see the conjoint tendon there so again we will see there so this is the marking of inguinal canal above and parallel to medial half of inguinal ligament and if you take layer by layer first there is a skin anterior layer is formed by the skin and you can see the outlet already we have described that that is the location of superficial inguinal ring triangular opening with medial and lateral crust the medial crust is attached to that and what are the boundaries of the anterior wall skin superficial fascia external oblique and in the lateral one third by internal oblique fibers you can see here skin superficial fascia is there and also membranous fascia which is a layer of the superficial fascia only below umbilicus there are two layers superficial fatty and deep membranous then external oblique in the entire extent of the anterior wall then you can see here the internal oblique the internal oblique in the lower part you can see internal oblique is forming cremastic fascia there but it will form only lateral one third you can see left of this line lateral one third of the anterior wall of the inguinal canal so skin superficial fascia external oblique in the entire extent then lateral one third by this internal oblique then roof is formed by arched fibers of internal oblique and transverse abdominis you can see here you can see the arched fibers there you 
can see this one is there. Arch fibers of uh, internal oblique and transverse abdominus. You can notice here you can see again the arched fibers. This is very important to understand the arching of both interoblic and transverse abdominus. And again notice there, you can see a spermatic cord is going below the transverse abdominus carrying the fascia from fascia transversalis as internal spermatic fascia. So here you can notice. this arching is very important it is formed and you can see on the medial side you will see conjoint tendon formed by internal oblique and transverse abdominus as you can notice here conjoint tendon is also called as fox inguinalis and coming to the floor floor is formed by inguinal ligament and its expansion called as lacunar ligament that you have already seen again you can see here if you take out the subcutaneous tissue covering the Spermatic cord there, superficial inguinal ring, then we will take out the external spermatic fascia derived from external oblique, cremastic fascia derived from internal oblique, and you can see here the internal spermatic fascia derived from fascia transversalis. You can see the contents of spermatic cord there, testicular artery and cremastic artery. So, floor is formed by inguinal ligament and lacunar ligament that you can notice here. So, lacunar ligament is present only in the medial uh, one fourth you can say in the floor. And uh, you can also see the posterior wall is formed by in the middle one fourth by the conjoint tendon also called as fox inguinalis. Fox means sickle. It is a sickle shaped fold strengthening the medial part of the posterior wall. So, here internal oblique is forming anterior wall roof and also posterior wall via conjoint tendon and the entire the posterior wall is formed by this fascia transversalis. You can see there posterior wall and you can see there the ductus difference entering the deep inguinal ring and becoming a content of spermatic cord. You can see there. So, ductus difference begins from testis from superficial inguinal deep inguinal ring. It enters the pelvic cavity and joins the duct of seminal vesicle to form ejaculatory duct opens in the prostate and then joins the male urethra. So, that is the course of this one. Posteriorly, entire boundary is formed by the fascia transversalis. And uh, coming to the this development of inguinal canal, during development the testis will be in the posterior abdominal wall near the kidneys at the level of L2. But uh, during the later part of the uh, fetal life, they will undergo descent by gubernaculum testis and they will reach the scrotum. So, inguinal canal is formed like that and coming to defensive mechanisms, why we do not have hernia as usually because of these defensive mechanisms. Thank you.